But let's go and see how the internet did react to the game last night. First up, we got the Spurs Express. Harry Kane congratulates Hyung Min Son on making 400 appearances for Spurs last night. Um, it, it's uh, Son put out on Instagram saying 400 appearance at our club is a special milestone and really proud for feeling for me and my family last night was not the result and then he went on to talk about that and then Harry Kane just commented saying congrats brother <laughs> nice moment for Kane uh, an another assist lovely lovely um, but yeah look it's, it's, it breaks my heart a bit that he's saying it from Bayern Munich but it's what it is what yeah. can I say um, HMS uh, Top Son it shows a clip of Hyung Min Son after the game last night. Just apps, he looked angry, mm. uh, shouting at all his teammates, saying, "Why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do that?" Um, the tweet says, "Sonny is mad as f." He's shouting at Richarlison. Is he is he shouting at Rishi? Um, Didn't it look like Romero as well? Romero as well. He's getting getting involved. Look, this is. Um, Something that a lot of people say that uh, Sonny doesn't have in him. You know, he's too much Mr. Nice Guy. He's not a, he, he's not the kind of leader who will have a go with his teammates. But there's evidence. That there. Ah, look, I've seen him a few times this season have a real go at someone if he's, it feels like he's not doing, they're not doing the right thing. So uh, for me, um, I think Sonny is a proper leader. He's not just one of these guys who... Um, Yes, he is nice, and that's how he likes to lead, generally supporting other players and being very supportive uh, in general. But he also has it in him to call call people out and, and be critical of people if he, if he feels that he needs that, they need that. And maybe yesterday that was more frustration or, or anything, but that also shows that side to him. Yeah, and I love to see it. Squawker say Brendan Johnson has now been directly involved in more Premier League goals for Tottenham, 12 in 24 games, than he was in Nottingham Forest, 11 in 41 games. Uh, he now has three goals and three assists in his last seven Premier League appearances. So Brendan really growing in this Spurs shirt. Yeah, and really, really positive. Um, so more goal contributions now than off the off than he had in the season, which did, made us decide to spend fifty million on him. So that's really positive. And seeing how young he is, and he's you know already starting to get these consistent goal contributions. Hopefully, he's only going to get better and better as well. So that's really, really encouraging. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Jayco says, "Miss you to Gianni Vio." Yeah, I think we all do, man. Honestly. Uh, what I'll do to have him back. Bring back Vio. We Appar need a set beast coach. Apparently he's um he's just taken a job at the American national team or some national team. He moves recently. around a lot to be fair. Yeah. Um bring him back is what I say. Mm. Whose idea was it to get rid of him? Because he didn't leave with Conte, didn't he? He left after Conte left. Like at the beginning of the season. It was weird. He never really didn't, there was never really announced that he was leaving. I don't know if he'd like he felt like he'd been here for two years or something, so he, now he needs to leave. But um yeah, uh, I think it was a bad decision to get rid of him considering how we're performing at the moment from set pieces. Yeah. Zara says, Captain Son looked so proud of Brennan yesterday. And look at these images. Um, unbelievable stuff. Sonny, uh, yeah, <laughs> delighted for Brennan. a great Brennan. moment. And I, lo I love those hugs from Son. Captain's Captain material, human Son. Kuti Romero says, thank you for the fans for always supporting. Now to continue working and give you the best in what remains all together as always. And if you just scroll through these pictures of uh, Kuti Romero last night. Um, yeah, I thought it was a, um, a leader's performance from him as well. Yeah, I thought he had a really good game. And I thought on the ball especially, he was brilliant. Um, but unfortunately, we didn't get the result. We didn't um, make the most of his good moments. But I thought another good game for Romero, who I think has been playing well for a while now. Yeah. Zara, uh, this is uh, Son with his two bodyguards in uh, Romero. And <laughs> no one's screwing with Son when they got those two on. <laughs> love it. Absolutely love it. Sam Dean says uh, Tottenham's last four results batter Villa away uh, from home, get thrashed by Fulham, scrape past Luton, and produce a pretty uninspiring draw at West Ham. All feels a bit patchy. Signs of a developing team. The early season consistency has totally gone. I mean, that, yeah, that's true. The consistency and performance that we saw in those first 10 games is not there at the moment. Um, I do think it's a sign of a de developing team. I think it's a sign of a work in progress. I think. That's how it goes for a lot of teams at, the, at this current stage. And in fact, I think I would argue uh, it usually goes a lot worse than for a lot of teams at this current stage. Very, very rarely does as a team um, at this stage in their, in their process, um, does it go a lot better than what, what uh, than this. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, I, I'm pretty comfortable where we're at. I think 
and we need to be patient. But yeah, it's frustrating that we had that those performances early on, and it hasn't quite. We haven't been able to kick on from there. But I think there's a lot of reasons for that. You know, it's important to put things into perspective, isn't it? Like at the beginning of the season, you're losing Harry Kane on the eve of the season. You've got a, pretty much the starting eleven was a whole completely new eleven that had never played together. Um, you know, Van der Ven and Romero never played together. Udogi's first season. Porro just came at the back end of last season. Uh, you're looking at the midfield. Bisuma was in and out last season, didn't get any consistent runs. Papsar, um, it's his first real breakout season as well. He hardly played a, a Premier League minute before that. Brennan Johnson's new, so many new players, you know, ha- trying to fit and gel all these players. As, and on top of that, you've got a new manager, a new system. Everything is brand new. And then we start the season like we did. Everyone was expecting ups and downs this season. When the ups and downs, and particularly the downs actually happen, people are like, all right, what's going on here? Is Ange fit for purpose and all this kind of stuff? It's absolutely ridiculous. So you've got to realise where you're at at the stage of a football club, the way we're progressing. And when you look at the whole season, the season as a whole, yes, maybe we haven't been consistent like as we were in the first eight to ten games of the season. But let's be real, like how many games have we actually been proper outclassed in this season? You're looking at the Fulham game, you're looking at the Brighton game and potentially maybe the Wolves, the two Wolves games. But apart from that, have we been outclassed in any other game? Yeah, it's been all those other games have been very close. So if not, we've probably been the better side. So um, I completely agree. And I think that's that's a very important perspective. Um, up to Joe says 20 out of 20 Tottenham are just the fourth side to gain at least 20 points from winning positions 22 and drop at least 20 points from winning positions 20 in a Premier League season after Southampton in 94-95 Everton in 12-13 and Tottenham in 12-13 roller coaster yeah and I think that also um, goes to show the up and down nature of, uh, of a bit of how we've been playing and I think that will stabilise once we um once there's more time under Ange Postecoglou, a few more signings, um, the system gets refined a bit. I think all those things will come. Uh, it's good that we're able to come back from from behind. It's not good that we keep giving away points from losing from winning positions. But I think that will that will sort out. I think we can handle that. Mm. The Spurs watch tweeted out last night saying Kulusevski is absolutely useless and. Um, Alex THFC responded to that saying the standards are ridiculously high on Kulusevski if we, if we expect him to hit Richarlison with a perfect cross at this point it was it was shit but let's be realistic Kulusevski is not the reason why we didn't win but it suits the agenda I guess and I agree that Kulusevski is not the reason that we didn't win that game yesterday um, but he does need to be doing better yeah, but I don't like this pile on that. Like, I agree. Like, I don't you like know what I mean? Either. Yes, it was a bad moment for him. Don't get me wrong. I was frustrated, but like, you know, I, I think people make a good point. Like, where everyone sort of like, like sends support to Richarlison about you know he's talking about mental health and all this stuff, and then you know, people are happy to pile on at moments like that as if players don't see that and as if they don't feel like it's going to affect them and things like that. Look, maybe Kulusevski will look at that and think and use that as fuel as motivation to improve and get better. I don't, but a lot of players might look at that. I don't know how their mentality is. A lot of players might look at that and think, um, oh, I am doing shit. You know, I'm not doing very well. And it can really get into their head. And I don't like to see that. He need, they need support in those kind of moments. Yes, obviously, I'm not going to sit here and say that was fine what Kulusevski did. He, he, I don't even think he needed to cross it to Richarlison. He could have held the ball up. You see, we've we got a lot of players in support there. So, yes, I know he needs to be doing better, but I don't like tweets like that. Kulusevski's useless people like calling him out saying he's rubbish all that kind of stuff and then like as if they're trying to drag him down or something I don't like that at all I think it's a really terrible way to use this platform it's a it's the mentality in this day and age you know a couple of bad performances and you're literally um you know and public enemy number one <laughs> and it's, it's ridiculous like it's all right to criticize criticizing is fine but to to do that pile on and pile on yeah. and say this and that and keep going and non-stop it, i think it's just so over the top in it and it doesn't need to happen for me kulisevsky is a quality player i love kulisevsky and i know i've given him a lot of stick this season in terms of what he does from the right wing but that doesn't take away from the fact I know what qualities he has and I know he can be a top player for us. I just don't think it can be from the right wing. I'd much prefer him to move in those central areas and he got that chance yesterday, albeit not for a very long time because he did move out to the right-hand side. But to say that a lot of people I'm seeing like Kulusevski is absolutely useless. He's by far useless. He's a quality, quality player with the attributes that he does have. Let's be yeah. real. If you tweet that saying, you know, Kulusevski's got to do better here or something like that, that's different. But then you're tweeting out something literally just attacking him. I think it's completely uncalled for. Yeah. THFC Cho saying, 
Werner's shimmy to his left, and this is uh, LeBron. Unstoppable. <laughs> <laughs> Just as good as LeBron, I think. I think. I think he does it better, in my opinion. Much better. Unstoppable. The GOAT, Timo Werner. <laughs> Love that. Uh, Yido90 says, can anyone hand on heart say that they're enjoying watching this Spurs side? See, this is what I don't like. I am enjoying it. Yes, there are some performances which, like yesterday, is frustrating, but I am genuinely enjoying watching Spurs. Like the, on the weekend, I enjoyed our performance. We created lots of chances. We should have won the game all comfortably. And then there are, yes, you're going to have games like Fulham where it wasn't good and I didn't enjoy it. But by and large, this season, most games have been very exciting, a lot of great attacking football, and it's been very enjoyable to watch. That Villa game was very, very enjoyable to watch. Like I, the, the, the City game when we drew three all the Etihad, the Arsenal game in the Emirates, brilliant games of football where we played great stuff and went toe to toe with some great teams like I hate tweets like this where people are just like trying to put some weird narrative that like it's been terrible the whole season and like you know any, no, I haven't joined watching Spurs at all like, like come on guys like yes it wasn't the result we wanted but I don't get these kind of narratives people try to twist on it and this is on the back of watching like Drab, Conte, Stellini and Mason Ball last season mm -hmm. like it's 10 times better than what we saw last season um, let's be real and yes there has been games and we haven't been at our fluid best um, for a while now that's got to be true but there are moments in games that get you off your seat. And in every game, there's at least moments where we put some really nice patterns of play together and you can see the nucleus of a team really coming together and, and start to see, you know, getting back to those first 10 games of the season, getting back to being at our fluid best. And I think um, don't judge Ange until maybe we're halfway through next season or even by the end of next season, because I think that's when you're going to see the real Ange ball come out. Mm. Uh, Spurs talk show Sean Butler put out a tweet yesterday saying we have a shot shy squad horseshoe football looking at the perfect moment is a problem we were the better team dominating possession we deserve more from the cru from this crucial game and I just wish our attacking players have more desire to take shots in wet conditions to see what happens from the inevitable pinball that does happen from those moments yeah I think that's also a good point I think we should um, be, be trying a like a bit more just because it can force situation. Just like that right at the end, Kulosevsky whips in that cross, you know, falls to the who plays it to the doggy and just forces something, you know what I mean? And as you say, uh, as, as Sean is saying here, if you take long shots, you, 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 what, do you, what do they say? You don't win the lottery if you don't buy a ticket, that, that kind of You don't of buy thing. a ticket if you don't, uh, you don't win, win the, the raffle. Lottery. You yeah. don't win the lottery if you don't you buy can't a ticket. Win, yeah, exactly. You yeah. can't win the lottery if you don't buy a ticket. So, like, I think we need to be doing a bit more of that. Like, even if it doesn't seem on, just try something a bit outside the box. Try and force a bit of a pinball situation, as he's saying. Try and force your luck. Make your own luck. And maybe that's something that we didn't um, do enough yesterday, make, trying to make our own luck. But also on the flip side, just because you try and make your own luck doesn't mean you get it all the time. Yeah. Um, but, you know, you've got to take a bit of risk sometime. And uh, this is what I was saying in the match uh, review. Like, sometimes it's just always us trying to play that perfect Ange ball goal, get winger to winger, get crosses in the box. But sometimes, you know, just take a pop shot from 30 yards. We've got the players to do it. We've got the quality. We've got the individual quality to do it. So why not try it uh, more than we do? Uh, perplexes me but anyway uh, Lily White Lab says uh, those games will never suit Son as a nine uh, just didn't give their centre backs anything to think about would have uh, had Rishi on a lot earlier for what it's worth that matchup really doesn't suit our current side so I'm not fuming at this point our front three are improving but lack the, uh, the uh, lack of retention really does harm our ability to control longer periods of the match. Bentancor slowly getting back to his best, so silky in possession. Poro, on the other hand, I've been disappointed with recently. Pretty wasteful in the final third. Um, yeah, I mean, in terms of Pedro Poro, I thought second half against... Um, against Luton mm. was like him coming back to um, you know really into fruition into those attacking areas but I agree with him in the last like three or four games he hasn't been as effective on an attacking standpoint that maybe he has been for the most of the season yeah I think yeah in the final third yesterday he was pretty wasteful albeit he had you know kudos to deal with and I thought he dealt with them pretty well so he deserves credit for that I agree with the Benton core point I do think he's slowly getting back to his best albeit again there were some sloppy moments but when he was looking on it he was looking really really great so that's really good um um, that is something I've pointed out about our front three. Sometimes when it's Werner and Johnson on the wing, they give the ball away a bit too much and then it keeps the ball coming back. Actually, I didn't feel like that was a problem yesterday, to be honest. I actually thought they kept the ball pretty well. Um, I don't think they were giving the ball away constantly, mm. so maybe that's something they're getting better at. But um, 
still, uh, I feel like they kept the ball in those situations, especially on Werner's case, but without really doing much. You know, they'll keep the one pass back. Whereas I feel like Lens, when someone like Decky's there, he can keep it and actually, you know, put a cross in or do something. So um, that's something something to look out for. Um, and then the Son point, uh, these games never suit Son. Yeah, it didn't suit Son yesterday, that's for sure. I do think when Son is at his sharpest, he can still have a role to play in, in these kind of games. Uh, if he's at his best, he can get the ball very quickly out of his feet and get a shot off very quickly. But in games like yesterday, sometimes when he's crowded out and he's and if he's looking for that extra second on the ball or half second, then it's going to be very, very difficult for him. And it definitely was yesterday. Um, I think in general... Um, you probably want someone with a bit more physicality in a number nine in that kind of game. So it's probably a decent point. But I do think as we have seen games as well where Son has made a bit of an impact. But I do think, by and large, in these kind of games, it's gonna, always going to be a bit more struggle for him. Yeah, it's just frustrating. That it took him so long to recognise that and so long to bring on a Richarlison. Mm. Like, so long. When you could see the fans were calling for it for a while, weren't they? Mm. Getting that Richarlison song going. Um, THFC report just bringing a um, all the Spurs players walking off after the game looking dejected really they know they should have won that game last night yeah I think it's good that they didn't think the point was a good point like they're happy that I'm, I'm happy that they're disappointed at the point rather than look I don't want them coming away with anything oh it's a fine result whatever I think you can see after the game that they they thought they should have been doing better so that's how we're going to drive them on to improve and I think that's a good mentality to have yeah um back on the point by the way the previous thing with the front three I actually I, I know Werner didn't have the great the greatest game last night but I actually I know I said it to you last night but I'm starting to warm to him I really am mm. I like I like his mentality I really do. I like what he offers um, in terms of, you know, getting down the byline, that shift out to his to the left and getting balls in the box. I think he creates at least like one big chance every single game. Mm. And um, as long as he's not brought in as our first choice starting left winger next season, I'm, I'm warming to the idea of, of taking up that 50 million uh, shot for him. Yeah, as I say, if it's him plus another one, I'm not going to be. It's not going to be the end of the world. I'm not going to be that disappointed. Um, I do think he has a use. Uh, to be honest, I do like him. But as you say, if we're signing him, thinking he's going to take us to the next level, I think that would be a mistake. Mm. But as a squad player, I think he would be really good. Mm. Um, and last but not least, uh, oh, but that's it for reacts. By the way, uh, <laughs> I was going to go last but not least in terms of uh, super chat we've got here from. D Sinclair, uh, with our first choice back five, played 17, won 11, drawn six, scored 32 and um, against 16. So say that again. Uh, with our first choice back, back five, play. played 17, won 11, drawn six. So we've unbe unbeaten. That's incredible. That's pretty good. Uh, that makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah, because we're, cause we're Van der Ven came out. Has Van der Ven we... not been on a losing side yet? No, because we lost to Fulham. And he wasn't playing. Before then, when was our last loss before that? I'm just trying to look. Um, I'm sure Van der Ven, didn't he lose a game recently? Um, we lost to Wolves. He Was he playing against Wolves? He played against Man City. He did play against Wolves. Wolves. He did play against Wolves. But the fullbacks didn't play against Wolves. Oh, right. Okay. Um, so, yeah, um, that's spot on then. To be fair, though. All the other games, yeah. Against um, against Chelsea, we did have our, our first choice um, back four, but, but we weren't we, we weren't losing. But when they were there, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they, like when that, that, we were, we weren't the band of Ben went off injured after half an hour, and a dog got sent off just after half time, and we were and we were drawing at that point. Yeah, yeah. So I think that's uh, that, that makes sense. So with our first choice, we are unbeaten. That's pretty mad. Apart from Man City in the cup, but that's a cup game. Do we, have, we had our first choice back four then. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but that was like a 1-0 loss against the treble winning champions in the last minute mm. so in the league I can't believe it it's actually mad we're unbeaten with our first choice back four just yeah that uh, goes to show the, the, the potential of this team it's a good point all right. Well, there you have it. That is our stream for you guys. Post-match of the 1-1 frustrating draw at West Ham last night. Thank you, everyone, for watching us today. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Like, subscribe, and comment. And as always, come, come on, you Spurs. Spurs.